Hey guys, Dad Tries, and this is Pacific Drive. This game released yesterday, February 22nd, 2024, on the Steam Store, and I picked it up on sale for $26.99. The regular price is $29.99. This is a story-rich survival. I'm going to call it a crafting game, even though the only things you craft are parts for your car. So, But it, it's still a crafting game, whereas you have to scavenge for materials, craft different materials into more better materials so that you can use those things to upgrade your car or fix your car and keep yourself going and keep the story progressing. So what can I say about Pacific Drive? I guess, first of all, the visuals are pretty good. First and foremost, when I was actually driving the car, it was raining out, so I had to turn my wipers on. Um, and just for fun, I left the wipers off just to see what would happen if I did that. Um, and it actually, I, I liked the way that the water pooled up on the windshield and would actually streak upward, like if you were actually driving. That was, that was pretty cool. It's a neat feature. You also have to take special care. Make sure you put your car in park. Uh, what you're seeing here is that I actually initially I had parked my car much closer to this broken down one that I was going to siphon the gas out of, but I forgot to put it in park um, and it rolled away. So that's that's why I'm so far away. The maintenance system that's in here for your car is pretty in depth. There's a lot you can do. You can pretty much upgrade every quarter panel on the car. You can change out your tires. You can upgrade the doors. Um, I don't even have a bumper yet. Uh, I also don't have a hatch on the back of my car. But all of those things are, are things that you're supposed to kind of work towards and craft. And the, most of the premise of the game is just um, figuring out the story, figuring out the mystery of how you got into this radiation zone, how to get out, and bonding with your car, um, and just adding more and more upgrades and features and things like that into your car. I gotta say, I don't love the inventory and crafting system. I really, the backpack's okay. I'll give the backpack a pass. I think that's clever, but the crafting system is, is kind of crap. I really don't like it. There's a few, like, predetermined spots in your car where you have to put certain things and i just i that's kind of dumb it, it really was unintuitive that the only things you can put in those spots are these predetermined things like the crafting system and your computer gps system goes in the front seat and there's just a lot of room for customization that i think they robbed us on on this and building those things and adding them into your car is kind of baked into the tutorial. And it was just kind of useless. I just, you know, just give me the car with the stuff. Like, don't, I don't know. Not fun. It was so boring. It was so mind-numbingly boring to go through the tutorial and run around and search the dumpster that has the yellow diamond on it and search the trash can. Oh, go search this toolbox. Go search this locker for stuff that you can't craft. It's just, it was, it was bad. I was so bored. And I think Ironwood got a little bit lazy on a lot of the game as well. Not just in the tutorial, but in the actual gameplay. I mean, for example, if you want to fix the car, you just just get some repair putty. You know, that's what that's what you would normally do. You know, if your if your car is severely broken, you just add the bondo, just pump the bondo right to it, fill the whole friggin' quarter panel full of bondo, and you're good. That's how it works in real life. So why not why not do it in this game? I don't know what kind of system exactly I would want for repairing the car, but lathering paste is not not what I wanted. That absolutely breaks any sort of immersion this game had any chance of having. An absolute swing and a miss from Pacific Drive is the fact that this is a driving slash exploration game, and the only way to get from one area of the map to another is to fast travel. Yeah. Yeah, that's it. So if you want to get from one major area to another to explore, you just open up your your GPS, decide where you want to go, you hit travel, it tells you how much time it's going to take, and then you hit a loading screen that says you're traveling. That's that's not okay. This is supposed to be an exploration game. Let me explore. Don't make me sit through a loading screen in a game that's meant to be immersive and vast. That awful. Swing and a miss, guys. No good. And then once you get to the spot that you're fast traveling to, they tell you that, oh, there's there's nobody here. There hasn't been anybody here and nobody's coming back. So just do whatever you want. Loot anything. It's all yours for the taking. There's going to be no opposition whatsoever. 
And they tell you that. They bake that into the game as it's canonical lore that there's nobody around so that they didn't have to put NPCs or really anyone to give you a hard time. Just abysmal. Find those materials by any means necessary. No one's coming back ever again, so go on and take what you need. Transports, homes, outposts, facilities, they've all been abandoned since the zone was decommissioned in 87. Most of those structures won't even be there the next time the instability scrambles the area. So loot to your heart's content. Just loot away. Yeah, so there's there's that. Um, but then I did, as I was playing, I ran into these flying toilets. And um, I thought, those look like they would absolutely kill me if I got too close. And after a little while, I honestly was bored of looking around and looting and trying to get into different various buildings and structures, things like that. And so I said, you know what? I've been pretty close to these flying toilets for a while, and I don't think they've really even noticed me. I don't think they actually do anything. So I got right up on it and and check out check out what your adversaries do here. <laughs> That's it. That's it. I was transported 100 feet to the east by a flying bidet. And it was at that point when I decided, well, I haven't been playing this game all that long. I spent $27 on it and I do not like it. I do not like it at all. I can't recommend this game. Um, I guess one of the positive things about it is it's single player only. So you can pause it anytime you want to and walk away, I guess. Other than that, no, um, no, there's no, it has controller support and it limped along on the steam deck. I had to turn, you know, obviously the quality settings down, but the controller support works. It's there. So maybe, maybe if this is your thing, it's something you can take with you. You definitely don't need a network connection if you want to play it on the steam deck. So I guess it has that going for it. If you're looking for a game that's like this, that doesn't take itself too seriously and is actually an open world sandbox, good luck and, and get as far as you can. There's a game out there, it's called The Long Drive and it's been out for a while. They are slowly developing it, um, but it's really fun. There's even, there's even a beta that allows multiplayer. It has terrible, terrible desync issues. Um, so maybe, go into the multiplayer beta with it's not even a beta it's more of a play test right now but go into that with an open mind and take everything with a grain of salt there but that game is 16 dollars and it's a ton of fun it's a bummer you know i was looking forward to this one i had it wish listed for quite a while and i just think it fell through this i can't i can't recommend this one at all but um that's it that's all I've got for Pacific Drive. I appreciate you taking the time to watch the video. If this was helpful, give me a thumbs up, consider subscribing, and absolutely leave me a comment. I really like all the comments. Thanks for everything. Have a great rest of your day. And I leave you with my accidental achievement.